Football Analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman Podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here. Well, it's that time again. Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, tag me along for the ride. Zoom and pod right here on the CLNS Media Networks and our exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media is Prize Picks. We are so happy to have Prize Picks, one of the largest daily fantasy sports platforms in North America, on board with us here with the Ryan Goodman Tangway along for the ride, Zoom and Pot. All right, guys, let's go to the Celtics last night. Are we impressed by that win, or did Golden State lay down? Jeff, I'll start with you. I mean, how can you not be impressed by a, a 52-point win? I don't care if anybody lay, laid down or not. They still, last I checked, they had Steph, they had Draymond, they had Clay. Um, they didn't play a whole lot because the game was over early, but man, like that was impressive. And, and like, I understand, but I don't understand Steve Kerr's kind of decision to lay off Jalen Brown and let him shoot threes. Cause I actually think it's, it. I know you're not in your head. No, I'm only saying that because to me, he's a average three point shooter. Now, again, he's average, but when you're shooting uncontested threes, He's not very average, right? Like that number goes up, obviously, to 40, you know, percent or so. Um, you know, the hard part is when you're defending the Celtics, how do you defend them? It's not easy anymore. You have to pick your poison, even though, again, they're without Porzingis. And that's the crazy part. They won by 100 without Porzingis. So right. you're picking your poison, but you're taking away arguably the second best weapon offensively that the Boston Celtics have in, in Porzingis. Let's back up. And you're right about Porzingis. When I found out, I, I, um, I started watching the game on TV at a restaurant and uh, found out that Porzingis wasn't playing. And I said to my wife and daughter, I, I'm not counting this game. If they lose, it doesn't count. I only count games where everybody's playing for the big picture. Now I'm only half, that's only half facetious, by the way. Okay? So that's number hey, one. Hey, you won't be counting a lot of games. If that's the case, now back when, when you covered it full time, it was different. Now, was that all, if there you was did no that, issue. there'd be no meaningful games in the regular season, Bob. <laughs> I know. So uh, that's my new joke about this season. Yeah, okay. So the game was 21-21. Which, and, and by the way, the, the story of the game was, was the, the scoring was being done by Kaminga and M- Moody. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, yeah. and, and uh, by this time, Steph had already airballed his first two threes. Okay. So, and then they, a 61 to 17 run is what ensued after 21 21. Okay. I looked it up, and guess what? They are the first team with 350 point wins in a season in the, yeah. in the history of the league. Not surprised. And here's one for you guys. Because of the fifth folded in their 11 game winning streak is another 50 pointer, as you know, against Philly. Okay. They have, are winning by an average of 22.1 points a game over their last 11 games, which is an all time record, such as it is. Um, they are teasing their fandom terribly. Now, the expectation level, don't you think, is worsened exponentially during this oh. particular 11 game winning streak? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. They got to win it. They've so, got to well, win they it. Gotta win it. They got to win it for the fans, which is unfair to them because we all know it ain't that easy. No. And when the playoffs start, there's new dynamics. And they this have is the worst the thing move. that could have happened. This is the worst thing that could have happened to this. <laughs> yeah. No, but it is. No, I they, agree with you. The prohibitive favorites. I you don't want to be the prohibitive favorites going into the playoffs when mentally you haven't been able to, to get over that hump. Like now, again, this could be great for him at the end of the day. This could be great for him. That's, but well, right they, now, tell me you're not a little bit concerned about this group. Now, again, they've got a couple men, at least in Derek White and Drew Holiday, who's won one. So thankfully, I, I like having Drew on this team more than anything else. Cause again, he could talk to him. They respect him. He's won a ring. You are hundred percent correct. I am concerned, but, and I'm a little less concerned because I do like the things they are saying. 
I like sure. what's coming out of uh, Tatum and, and Brown's mouth. Yeah. I want to believe that they truly get it the way they they are telling us that they now get it. Okay, I mean, because getting it is what the issue is. We there's no question of a doubt. They're the most talented one to fill in the blank. Five, seven, eight, nine, because Cornette is not a stiff. All right. And now I got Tillman, who may be an asset. I so like him. There is no question they have that that Danny and Brad could have constructed a championship level roster. Yeah. But that talent is only the beginning in any sport. You got to have talent, but you need other components to win, including luck including health. Now, health's a given. Everybody has, everybody has health. So it's not just them. Everybody has to worry about right. some, uh, somebody being hurt. So that, so that's not, a, that's not unique to them. But they have, right, but the expectation level among the fandom, and they're being fueled, I'm sure, by the talk shows, which I don't listen to, and, and, uh, uh, and so forth. Um, but it's there for them. And we are, now, we already agreed two months ago, three months ago, three of us, that this is a now year for them. Oh, this is it. You no, gotta do it. Yeah, because they have what? everything going for them in studio yeah. experience. Once again, I'm going to point out to somebody who may be new listening to us. Think about this. There's no they not one guy in this team who matters is under the age of 25. They are all experienced. And no, they're all in their prime now. They're all in yes. their prime. Like it's this not like it. Jason Tatum's too young now. Like oh god, he's matured. Well, he's matured now. He well, has. Yeah. So that's the thing. It, this this team. Al is the one guy who's older, but you know what? He's a role guy now, and he fits exactly what they need from a locker room perspective. The only thing, the only thing you still worry about, in a way, is when things go bad. Who's that vocal guy? Who's who's going to get him going? If things are going bad, they take a hit and they hang their heads a little bit, and it's 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 gut time. Like it's yeah. it's yeah. Well, of course, there's going to be, yeah. you know, there's going to be something, you know, some hurdle there, you know, but uh, it, it's, I, I say to the fans, which I remember saying back in 85, 86, enjoy the ride, enjoy yeah. it, you know, exult in it, uh, uh, you know, uh, get the bragging rights over the, whoever it is that you want the bragging rights over, your cousin in New York, whatever the hell, something, yep. and enjoy the damn thing, because they are playing beautiful basketball. I'll tell you what I love most of all. Uh, and, and I, I, and this is like in the realm of taking Tatum and and Brown for given, I mean, for as a given now. They're both so good. Uh, that backcourt, what a what a, a what a pair they are. They're like two professors. It's a like pleasure to watch. Professors, yes, because I mean, they're all about the right things. They yes. play. I've said this. They're adults. Yes. It's like watching right. full fledged adults who know how to play the right way. Don't give a shit about anything other than making the right decision to win, to win. And to get to this point, they each have taken a different path because I'm sure Holiday was an acclaimed, tell me, wasn't an acclaimed high school player? He, he was, so he was. Um, he was highly, pretty highly regarded going into UCLA. Um, can I give you his his college stats coming out of UCLA? I'm trying oh. to find him right now. <laughs> sure. Ready? You're going to laugh. You're going right. to laugh at this. Drew Holiday. Well, I mean, they're not as crazy. They're not as, as underwhelming as I thought. But <laughs> he, he only averaged uh, 12 and a half points oh, wow. his freshman year. Um, but he left after that. Like, I think he left after his freshman year. 12 and a half points, right. five and a half rebounds, five and a half assists. It actually fits him. Okay. But it I was thought- like, why are you coming out now? Why aren't yeah. you coming back for another right. year to beat right. a guy? Mm-hmm. So when he came out early, I think a lot of people shook their heads because, again, he doesn't pass the look test. He's not going to pass the combine test. No. What he passes is <laughs> all of this. Right. Yeah. Everything up here, Drew Holiday is elite, and he's an elite defender. We know that. He's just, like, give Brad credit. And, and again, I go back to this over and over. Brad Stevens' experience as a coach playing against having to having to actually be in the trenches and figuring out how to stop these guys, what they do well, seeing them up close and having to scout them gave him a major, major advantage with Derek white, 
with Drew Holiday and understanding the value and, and even seeing the way they are on the court with their teammates, things like that. <laughs> yeah, Talking yeah, yeah. to people in the locker room, guys that have probably, you know, and Brad, again, Brad's got these connections to college as well, where he could call Ben Howland, who coached him in college. Mm -hmm, he right. can call Pad Boyle, who coached Derek White in college, and they aren't going to feed him a line of bullshit. They're going to shoot him straight. Well, speaking of, uh, let's get to the other guy. I mean, who knew who he was coming out of high school? But he went to June, he went to, no, he went to uh, Vision 2, right? right. Oh, yeah. Colorado State Pueblo, I think. Yeah, so um you know that or colorado uh, pueblo colorado yeah, so and uh, his path has been one of upward mobility all the way you know uh but boy has he learned this lesson I, and thank you pop for whatever you you provided for him because you know that was an education for him you know that was a perfect place for a guy like that to go a guy that i'm sure pop saw that i could coach this guy and this guy is coach a bull and i'm obviously oh my god and, and um so anyway it's 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 a wonderful it, it's fun and please I just beg people just enjoy it and 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 don't get too cocky yet right right <laughs> they have to prove you're it, not, but they do you're have not to setting prove. the parade you're not setting the parade quite yet Bob? not the day I'm not uh, setting the doctor, but, but we don't have the road no we don't have the road plan just yet that'll be in, that'll be next week though. football season may be over but the action on the floor is heating up whether it's a tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court. There's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Prize Picks is really simple to play. And I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Use the code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay, 40,000 points for LeBron James, Mr. Yeah. Ryan. Since you're the resident well, NBA it, historian, it's a staggering number. It's a staggering number, and I, 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 the, I can't do any better. I urge you to go pick up or, or, or go online, whatever USA Today. Uh, is Jeff Zilgit's got the whole breakdown of what it means, uh, of, of, of what the scope of it is, and 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 how incredible this achievement is that he's done this forty thousand. I remember when I, I'm old enough to remember when Bob Pettit became the first twenty thousand man. You know, and and we thought that was something, huh? Um, uh, you see, let's get right to it. This has also triggered the LeBron haters. Have you, are you aware of this? Oh yeah. The, the LeBron haters. This is aggravate. This is this is fuel for them because because he didn't win as much as Michael, and you know, and hasn't won as many as Michael, and 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 and, and the reasons that people have manufactured to hate. A guy who I think has done the right thing more often than not, you know, get over the decision. You know, the decision was 14 years ago. So and get over was, the damn decision, please. It was okay? nothing. It was get nothing. over it. Yeah. But it, it, there are people who will manufacture reasons to dislike LeBron James as a basketball player. That's preposterous. That's preposterous. And and I think one of the things that was also on outline, he's fourth all time in assists. Right. Huh? Yes. Good note. He's the he's the he's the male Caitlin Clark. So no, I mean, come on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I salute him. All right, and and the way he's playing right now at this it's, at this level, and dude, we don't know when it's ending. He doesn't even know when it's ending. So you know, I mean, I I I I, I think it's worthy of great congratulations. All right, so can I can I give you some numbers here? I just looked at it. Tatum, yeah. Tatum right now has eleven thousand four hundred and eight points through his first seven years. He's twenty five years old. Uh, LeBron. Through his first seven years, fifteen thousand two hundred fifty-one points. Right. So he's basically almost four thousand points ahead of Tatum. Now Tatum's going to score a little bit more this year. Yeah. So so let's say he's four thousand points at the end of the day, uh, a little less. You know, he'll, he'll be like thirty-five hundred points ahead of him in seven years. And again, to play this long at this level, nobody's ever going to do it again. 
Nobody's well, ever going to do that. think to me, the, lo- the longevity is yeah. blowing me away because I thought just with plain science, he would his break body. down. His body. His body. I thought his body would break down just with right. age. And we it's all not. Did. But you know what he does? You know what he does? He is absolutely maniacal about his workout routine in the right. off season. Maniac. And, <laughs> Must um, be. But it is crazy. Like, the dude's body has held up, and he's that big and strong. And you would think it's just going to take, like, one knee injury. Like, like he, he hasn't had one. Something, nothing. He hasn't had anything, right? What's the most major injury he's had? I don't I don't, I don't even remember what I don't remember. I mean, right? he misses more games because of load management. Yes, but nothing major. Knock on wood. And uh, I don't know. Can he beat Tom Brady? Guys, why not? Could, why could not? He beat Tom Brady and go to forty-five. At some point, you know, you think he'd have to reconcile himself to a lesser role, but right but now, why? Not. If he could keep doing it, Bob, I know. I, you think but you're right. He, he, why? We've never seen anything like this. So correct. We never he's, seen he, like he, he's a freak of nature. Why can't at 45 he play 65 games? What I don't know what he's played this year. Uh, what he'll be on pace for, but but like everybody, why can't he play 60, 65 games and then the playoffs? And still be averaging twenty a game. Oh, well, it's it's remarkable, and 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 I just but the haters are out there, and they're always going to be out Which there. Which is so stupid. It's so dumb. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Haters, because the guys handled himself pretty much. He said one poor decision, and how he handled the decision. And other than that, what can you really get on LeBron James for? Well, yeah. yeah. He, he bitches to the refs. Everybody bitches to the they refs. All do. Not, not anymore. Look, he's had a, to me, a, a distinctly uh, two halves of a career. There was the pre, because he, he did have to, sure. And the way he had to learn how to win, in my opinion, was to take advantage, is to recognize that he's the best player on the floor and act accordingly, because he did shrink in 2010. He basically quit against the Celtics, and he did shrink in 2011. I'd, I'd love to know. Something had to have happened between the end of the 2010-11 and the beginning of the 2011-12 seasons because after that debacle against Ma- the Mavericks, a, either he figured it out or someone got to him that he would listen to to right. say, look, LeBron, you are the man. St- you know, right. you you must yep. take over. And he did not do it in those two seasons at, at, at playoffs. He He's done it ever since. He's done it. How about that game this week? With the with the fourth quarter comeback, that that was vintage. At at, at thirty nine, the, the, no. So he he has had he had a catharsis somewhere along the way, you know. And and I'm just point that out. That's all. But but you know how long ago that was? Well, thirteen years ago. So I, I think that's which is a longer than most people's careers by a lot. Right. <laughs> this is the second right. phase of his career. Yeah. I mean. Yep. You can go on and on and on and on. But when you're hiring for a small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role, right for the role. Not just anybody. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's important. You want to have quality candidates to interview. And with LinkedIn Jobs, it makes it so easy to find them. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion, that's with a B, a billion professionals, which make it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals that you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have so many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats. I mean, you have a lot of jobs to do, right? While you're growing and you might not have the time or the resources to sit there and do the hiring. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They've even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process quicker, easier, less of a hassle. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash scribe. That's linkedin.com slash scribe to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We have to get to a, another important topic, right, Gary? Yes, we do. Uh, Jeff, I Bob's not going to talk. We are. 
Uh, Bob wrote a phenomenal article. Uh, he has covered a, an athletic event in all 50 states. He spoke about it. Uh, it's in the Boston Globe. It is a must read. Yes. And more than ever, because whenever I read a Bob R Bryan column, I always hear him very loudly. And this was the same. Yeah. It was if Bob, would, and I'm sure it's a, it's a ma it's a great article, and you need to read it. What'd you think, Jeff? I mean, awesome. And 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 again, I I kind of knew Bob was doing this because um, I knew he needed one more state for a couple of years now, and it was South Dakota. And he texted me and said, "I'm going to South Dakota for a basketball game." And I put two and two together right away. Uh, I helped connect him with the, the head coach there at South Dakota State, Eric Henderson, who's a hell of a coach. And uh, I, I just wanted him to roll out the red carpet for Bob on his <laughs> final state. Uh, so he had dinner. Uh, I think he had a pretty good experience there. Saw a great game. And um, yeah, I mean, the column to me, I, I just, I learned a lot. Like I didn't know, Bob, that you were in Columbus, Georgia for a year living there. I turned down a job out of college with the Columbus newspaper because <laughs> my, my wife basically said to me, like, I can't no. live in Columbus. <laughs> I can't live in Columbus, Georgia. Yes. Um, that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have gotten us to the, uh, the altar, uh, my now wife. Um, so it, it just like, I read this and I was like, wow, like I didn't realize a lot of your <laughs> background and exactly where you had been and, and your mom and, uh, all this stuff, how big of a sports fan she was. I knew your dad was, and I knew a lot of his background, but, um, you know, again, it's just to, to have covered a, a sporting event in all 50 States. Like I look at it now and I'm like, I want to do it, but it's hard to get to Idaho. It's hard. You know, what are you getting to Montana for and Idaho in some of these places? Um, so really, really cool. I'm sure for you, this was like a ultimate bucket list thing that you you wanted to cross off because I don't know how many people have done this. I, well, I, um, I just have to say, Bob, before you, and you can respond in a second. Mm -hmm. I just have to say, I think it's your greatest achievement. And that says a lot because obviously uh, as a contributor or however, I know you're uncomfortable with this, but you're in the NBA, you're in the Basketball Hall of Fame as a contributor, you know, journalist, right? Um, you've covered... I don't know how many Olympics. I don't know how, how many Super Bowls. I don't know how many NBA championships. You vote for the Heisman. Um, you're a ph phenomenal author. But to me, this is your greatest achievement because it is the purest and it is the essence of what you do. The Thank you very much, Jim. And I, my guys, I, I really appreciate your, your thoughts here. Um, the, the truth of the matter is that this uh, wasn't a lifelong quest, although there was an erroneous headline to that effect in the globe. That it happened organically. It's just the life that I've led. It never dawned on me until around state number 47. You know, now I did want, no, really, wait. first of all, I, I, I wanted to get to all 50 states and forget sports which we did. We went to Alaska in 2016, slept in Alaska. I've now been to and have slept in all 50 states. Okay. Now that's part B, the sleeping in. That's a big part of the deal. Okay. So I've been to all 50 states. Um, when I got to like 47 or so around there, I'm thinking, wow, you know, I, I never, I wasn't, this wasn't a bucket list thing. The bucket list, as you know, not the bucket list, but the list list, the quest is gyms as arenas, college. I've been to 205 arenas. This was my 205th arena or, or venue, I call it venue, all right? Fine. Now, but not specifically, and it's attended or covered, not covered. It's attended or covered, you know, gone as a fan or covered. Okay. When I got to 40, 47 was Delaware. And I went to the Blue Rocks minor league baseball, okay? Uh, 48 was Alaska when I we went for the 50th state and my 70th birthday and thank god alaska fairbanks was home against <laughs> so i could knock off a sport event there and then came Ole miss football Ooh. i had never been to, uh, uh, to an event in mississippi i'd only crossed over the border whenever i was in new orleans i had no other reason to go to mississippi professionally got that done and then it was 50 and I, when i needed the 50th i went to Matt Pepin, the Globe Sports Editor, last fall said, I, 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 I said, I got 49. If I get 50, would you be interested in the story? 
Well, you saw what they did. I thank everybody. I thank them profusely for the presentation. The online presentation was spectacular. The Sunday they sent a photographer. They sent they a sent, photographer. They, they hired a photographer in, yes. in Brookings, South Dakota, who, who you know just followed me around all night. Yeah. And uh, uh, they they treated it. I'm I'm so honored and flattered and thankful and grateful. But uh, this is but I think more about it now. And you know, you mentioned my mother, and I just want to point out, you know, the thing about it was that my father died when I was 11 on May 10th, 1957, and the following September, she and I are sitting in Municipal Stadium in Philadelphia at the Army Notre Dame game, which was a very historic game, the resumption of that rivalry after a 10-year period. And the point is that Mary Ryan understood what sports meant to the kid, to, to Bobby. And, and and she made sure that I kept that I was kept in the loop, you know, that she didn't abandon it. Had my mother been indifferent to sports or ignorant of sports, then then who knows what would have happened? I'll be honest. And I never had Bob Ryan. No, I have so Bob Ryan, the she teacher. gets she gets a lot of credit for 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 the way she approached you know her her little boy after yeah. after her, her husband died. Yeah, congratulations, really cool. Bob! It is a hell of an achievement. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, good your job. passion. I mean, the one thing is your passion. And I'll, I'll leave it after this, Gary. Like to do this when again you're on assignment for games for for whether it's Final Four, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, other assignments, you know, Patriots game, anything, and you're trying to find a college hoops game in the area, and oh, you're just going. Never for fails. Fun. Never. Uh, every time that was that was what I'll admit to that one, yep. and I, I wanted as many of them as I could get. Now I'm up to 205, and I hope I'm not done. And I gotta pounding. catch you. I gotta try to catch Bob. I don't know if I can do it. It's gonna be tough, kid. I know. Uh, Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tangway, along for the Ride Zoom with Pod, brought to you by our exclusive daily fantasy partner. CLNS Media, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Good job, fellas. Talk to you again. Yeah.